Hi everyone, I wanted to do a video to show you how to make these earrings with shrink film. It was a fun experiment, I've never done this before and I wasn't sure how they would turn out but I thought it's worth a try. So here's the shrink film that I used. It's smooth on one side, it's kind of uh, scratched up and rough on the other. I got the transparent kind and uh, what I did was, I, since I had no experience, I just had this lying around. I don't even know why. I figured, let me just doodle on it. And so what I did was, you've seen this in my uh, Facebook posts, but I doodled on the rough side with some Posca pens. And uh, this is the smooth side. Looked really cool. And then I took this picture right here. It's a really big square, as you can see. And I punched it right over here. And then this strip, and there were two strips over here that I cut out with scissors. So the strips that I cut out with scissors, that's what you see here. That's the earring that I ended up with. So it's, you can see how the colors became more intense and I'll share photos of this. But the squares that I punched out when I put them in the toaster oven, um, this is what they showed up as. These are really, really cool. Very cute earrings, as you can see. I punched a hole. So I just wanted to take you through the process of making this. Let me just put my earring back on. So at the toaster oven here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to preheat it to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. This is my dedicated toaster oven for craft activities. I don't do, I don't do any cooking in this. This is just for crafts. And I highly recommend you have a toaster oven just for crafts, so you don't um, have any concerns about any of the fumes or residue going into your food. So we're just going to punch out a square here. That's one. I'm going to punch out a couple of them. Two. Three. I wonder if these would make uh, good pendants. You know, if you could. I think they would. Mm. But I like wearing earrings, so I'm just going to make earrings first. Four. And then I want to try a different design, and I don't know if this is actually going to work. But since I'm all about experimenting, I'm going to give this a try. I hope it just doesn't get stuck. So we'll see. We'll just do two of these. It's, uh, it's an interesting feeling to spend so much time. I spent two days making this freehand, and it's an interesting feeling to cut it up. Ah, okay. So that didn't really work. I'll try it one more time. Maybe put it down the table and try it. Oh, I hate when this happens. So it's not pushing it out completely. Woo! There we go. Oh, that is so cool. Oh, that is going to be such a cool piece of earring. And then do another one right here. Just trying to make sure that the edges are all lined up. Okay, this is going to take a couple of tries. Um, I have the beginning stages of rheumatoid arthritis, so this isn't really something that I am entirely comfortable with. And 
and it popped right out. So we have two of these flowers and then four of the squares. And then also I want to do the long ones that I did earlier for myself. So I'm just going to snip it off from here and snip it off. Toaster oven just dimmed, which means it's preheated. But I'm not ready. I'm just going to keep it going. And then just get another one of these in the mix. do is um, use my puncher here, but I see that the width is different for these two. One is a little bit thicker than the other. Okay, I'm going to worry about those later. Let me just do the squares for now, the squares and the flowers. So I think maybe have them dangling like this, yeah, definitely like this in this one. So make sure you go ahead and punch your hole before you put this in the toaster oven because it does become hard, the plastic. Now for this one, I think dangling it like this would be great. So, punching the hole over here pretty close to the edge. And then this one, I always like to imagine what they'd look like as earrings. And that helps me decide where to punch the hole. What speaks to me more, essentially, I just go by my gut. There's no rule. Well, there's no rule to any of what I do. It's just follow your heart. Okay, so these are all done. And then for these, it doesn't really matter which way because it's a flower. I'm um, gonna try to punch a hole where there's not that much design. And hopefully the petal is big enough. Looks like it is, it's just the right size. Oh no, it wasn't. Hmm. Okay. Didn't really position it right, did I? So I guess we're gonna have a necklace. Maybe you know what? I'll just uh, maybe I'll try to drill a hole in this later after the fact. So anyway, so we're gonna do this for two minutes, and this is how I do it. There's again. Um, no right or wrong way of doing it, but this is what I am doing after some research online on what's best. Never put it directly on metal. So what I'm gonna do is put a sheet of parchment paper and then place these in. So when I put the first tray in, it fell and um, I didn't record that bit, my phone fell too. So here I am, you see me putting in another tray with different shapes that I cut out in a similar manner that you just saw previously. So once you put in um, the tray in the preheated toaster oven, just make sure that you um, stop the oven, turn it off as soon as they shrink and they're not moving anymore. Because I've noticed that when you don't do that, they tend to start yellowing and um, also, it's, it's, they start getting these bubbles. So here you can see how they're shrinking right away. The temperature of the oven is between 325 and 350, and it usually takes about 30 seconds, maybe a minute. In the instructions, it says two to three minutes, and they recommend letting them cool down inside. I have noticed personally that when I do that, they get bubbles, so I just stop 
and pull them out right away. Um, I did want to show you the little flowers that I punched out. You see the hole wasn't quite aligned in that first one, but that's how small they are. And uh, it's really fun to see the designs that I made in that intricate manner show up on the smaller versions. It's just so much more, uh, the colors are so much more intense. The, designs looks, the design looks so much more complicated. It's really fun to see. So just pull them out. And if you need to flatten them, you can. If you don't need to flatten them, then that's fine too. It was a little odd. I had done these circle punches and they didn't really look like circles. They kind of became oblong shaped. So that was interesting too. And the tiny ones became really, really tiny. And then I'd also done some strips. Uh, the serrated edges that you see are from scissors, uh, the wavy scissors that are used for crafts. My daughter has one that I borrowed for this project. And then I did some strips. I was thinking of making some dangling earrings, but I might end up using them in some multimedia projects, um, like for my bookmarks or for other things. And I this this really made my heart sink when this happened with the strips. They just curled up and I thought, okay, well, that'll be interesting. But then they started unfurling and they started flattening out. So the first time you see that happen, it's like, oh my goodness, what do I do now? And you can't really do anything about it because it's in there. So um, just an interesting experience to have. And then here, what you see is uh, me uh, spraying them. I've sprayed these with Kamar varnish and they're sitting on parchment paper and they'll wait there for a day to dry. And then I may or may not do another coat um, of Kamar, but I probably will do another coat of the, either the triple thick glossy varnish or the UV protectant varnish. These are Posca pens. They don't really need Kamar, but because I'm so used to doing Kamar varnish after alcohol inks, and it does make the colors a bit more vibrant. So I figured I'd just do that anyway. And I love these long ones. They turned out so, so cool. Uh, the bright colors, the vivid patterns, everything about them is is just so fun. And the tiny ones are really tiny. I, I definitely will be using them in my mixed media projects. I think that's a good idea going forward with any of these shrink plastic projects that I do is to use these little itty bitty bits um, in my bookmarks or greeting cards or any other uh, mixed media projects that I do in the future because I think they'll really add some a special touch and then uh, this is just taking you through what it looked like in the very beginning when it was a whole sheet and that's the pattern I made and I got so many little items from it it's pretty cool to see how one sheet of shrink plastic can yield so many very very um, different looking but similar things so here are the earrings that i made and uh, i hope you enjoyed it and we'll do something with shrink plastic that you will enjoy thanks for watching